His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of Tunisia, K. Sayyid, on his country's Independence Day. His Majesty wished the Tunisian President abundant health and happiness and the people of Tunisia further progress and prosperity under his leadership. His Majesty the King appraised the strong Bahraini-Tunisian relations and the development and growth at all levels. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the President of Tunisia, K. Sayyid, on his country's Independence Day. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister wished Tunisia and its people a further progress and prosperity. He commended the historical Bahraini Tunisian relations and the development across various levels. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister sent a similar cable to the Prime Minister of Tunisia, Ahmed Hashani. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, a Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, hosted a Niftar banquet for several BDF senior officers. His Royal Highness was accompanied by the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Upon arrival, His Royal Highness was received by the BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Defence Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Nuemi, the BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Thia bin Saga Al Nuemi, and other senior BDF officers. His Royal Highness affirmed the BDF's advanced levels of combat readiness and efficiency, attributing them to the support provided by His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, which has bolstered the BDF's capacity to fulfil its duties effectively. His Royal Highness highlighted that the sacrifices and valour shown by BDF personnel will always be remembered. He also recognised the BDF's role alongside allies in preserving regional security and stability. On the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan, His Royal Highness exchanged best wishes with the BDF Commander-in-Chief and senior BDF officers and wished the Kingdom and the Arab and Islamic nations further security and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the newly appointed Ambassador of Cyprus to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Dr Andreas Eliades, at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of strengthening the bilateral cooperation between Bahrain and Cyprus to achieve common goals and interests. His Royal Highness welcomed the Ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain and wished him success in performing his diplomatic duties. The latest regional and international developments, as well as issues of common interest, were reviewed. The Ambassador expressed thanks for His Royal Highness's commitment to developing bilateral relations and wished the Kingdom further progress and development. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 10 of 2024, appointing two directors at the General Sports Authority, the GSA, based on a proposal by the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the GSA. The following shall be appointed to the G GSA. Yosef Douaj Mohammed Mafafi, as Director of Facilities Management Directorate. Mohammed Salman Maki Habib, as Director of Legal Affairs and Licensing Directorate. 
His Royal Highness also issued Edict 11 of 2024, appointing two directors at the Ministry of Social Development, based on a proposal by the Minister of Social Development. The following shall be appointed to the Ministry. Abdullah Hamid Abdurreta Abdullah as Director of the Social Assistance Directorate. And Ibrahim Ahmed Afadala as Director of the Social Welfare Directorate. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 12 of 2024, transferring and appointing directors at the Institute of Public Administration, based on a proposal by the Director General of the Institute of Public Administration. Yusuf Abdullah Ahmed Bachiri, Director of the Human and Financial Resources Directorate, shall be transferred to be the Director of Business Development Directorate. The following shall be appointed at the Institute of Public Administration. Mariam Fouad Abdurrahim Kamal as Director of the Human and Financial Resources Directorate and Ayman Yusuf Hassan Salman as Director of Learning and Development Directorate. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 13 of 2024, amending Article 1 of Edict 12 of 2019 on establishing the National Committee to Combating Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, AIDS, based on a proposal by the Minister of Health. Article 1 of Edict 12 of 2019 shall be replaced with the following. The National Committee to Combat Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome shall be established and presided by the Minister of Health and shall comprise of the following members. Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health as Vice President. Assistant Under Secretary of Public Health at the Ministry of Health as a member. Director of the Public Health Directorate as member. Director of the Health Promotion Directorate at the Ministry of Health as member. Head of the Therapeutic Division at the Ministry of Interior as member. Director of the Student Services Directorate at the Ministry of Education as member. Head of Awareness and Guidance at the Ministry of Labour as member. Director of the Family to Guidance Directorate at the Ministry of Social Development as member. Director of the Television Directorate at the Ministry of Information as member. Director of the Youth Empowerment Department at the Ministry of Youth Affairs as member. Consultant of Public Health at Ministry of Health as member. Head of the Infection Control Unit at Government Hospitals as member. Chief of Diagnostic Department at the Royal Medical Services for the Hospitals of the Bahrain Defence Force, the BDF, as member. Chief of Infection Prevention and Control at King Hamad University Hospital as member. Chairperson of the Pathology Department at the Arabian Gulf University, AGU, as member. Infectious Diseases Consultant and Head of Infection Control at the Ministry of Health as mentor and rapporteur. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed al Musalam, chaired the weekly meeting where the Council reviewed a draft law amending some provisions of the Penal Code. The Council decided to take the final opinion on the draft law as a matter of urgency, approve it as a whole and refer it to the Shura Council. The Council then approved a number of proposals and referred them to the Government regarding organising pension and retirement benefits for Government employees as well as military retirement law. The Chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, received the Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Muslims in Germany, Abdul Samad Al Jazidi, who pre presented to Sheikh Abdurrahman his own translation of the Declaration of the Kingdom of Bahrain in German. Sheikh Abdurrahman expressed appreciation to Al Yazidi for the translation, stressing that Bahrain takes pride in the declaration issued by His Majesty the King, which promotes religious freedom tolerance and coexistence, and which derives its values from the authentic Bahraini identity. For his part, Al Yazidi stated that his translation of the declaration into German language stems from the belief in the importance of its content and for the Germans to learn about it. The two sides discussed ways to bolster cooperation to enhance the common goals and stress the importance of concerted efforts between Islamic institutions around the world to serve and support good causes and advocate for Islamic values. The Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Traffic Council, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired the Council's meeting in the presence of the Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Arumehi, the Minister of Education, Dr. Mohamed Juma, a number of Under Secretaries of Ministries, representatives of agencies, and members of the Council. 
General Sheikh Rashid affirmed the need to continue enhancing traffic safety by reducing accidents, especially fatalities, and addressing traffic congestion, noting the importance of using modern technologies in re regulating traffic. The Council discussed the topics on the agenda, including studying a specific classification of delivery vehicles and bicycles and setting the necessary controls in this regard. The Council approved a number of developmental projects and proposals that enhance traffic flow and appointed a consulting office to review the strategy for improving traffic movement, which includes uh, several initiatives and policies. The meeting discussed traffic proposals to enhance awareness among road users and raise the rate of traffic safety, especially at schools, to ensure the safety of students. The Minister affirmed the importance of enhancing traffic safety and developing infrastructure in areas that witness frequent congestion, in addition to developing the public transportation system. The Minister of Interior expressed thanks and appreciation to the Council's members for the continuous follow-up and efforts to meet traffic safety requirements, noting the importance of fieldwork and the level of readiness around the clock to monitor traffic movement and regulate it. The National Bureau for Revenue, the NBR, announced the implementation of 2,115 inspection visits to local markets in all governorates during the year 2023, which resulted in detecting violations that required the imposition of administrative fines in accordance with the VAT and selectivity law. Inspection visits resulted in the detection of 244 violations, most of which were non-compliance with the conditions and procedures for issuing a VAT invoice and displaying prices for goods for services not including VAT and not displaying the VAT certificate. The selling, trading or storing of products that do not meet the system's controls on tobacco products have been prohibited. 539 inspection visits were carried out, resulting in detecting 53 violations in this regard. A number of suspicions of evasion of added and selective value have also been detected and the NBR has taken legal measures. The NBR urges those registered with it to adhere to the proper application of VAT and selective mechanism to avoid committing violations. A number of charitable societies and mosques launched the Iftasayim initiative in various governorates of the kingdom as an embodiment of the noble values and spirit of giving that characterise the people of Bahrain. More in this report. Based on the principle of solidarity and compassion during the holy month of Ramadan, the Iftar project for fasting people comes in response to the need of living in harmony and embodying the features of unity and cohesion by helping the needy to perform their fast and alleviating the burden of their nutritional needs so that they experience Ramadan, which is full of joy and blessings. Charitable initiatives during the holy month, activating the concept of community partnership and enhance the spirituality of the holy month. The month of Ramadan is the month of good deeds, and one of these good deeds is providing iftar for the fasting people, which has a major role in increasing the bonds of harmony and brotherhood among Muslims. The Kingdom of Bahrain pays great attention to the development of a culture of a humanitarian giving as an established priority by moving towards establishing humanitarian and charitable institutions to provide help to those in need, as the culture of giving and volunteer work has become an important indicator of the development of societies and is one of the engines of development.